guys, it's Holly here for PlayStation Access and I am in London and I have finally seen a game that I think looks absolutely beautiful. It is Ubisoft's Child of Light. I'm with Patrick, creative director on the game and uh, I want you to start by giving these guys um, a quick synopsis of what the story is all about. So Child of Light is a you know, turn-based RPG uh, with side-scrolling, with watercolor art style. So the story is about a young girl, Aurora. Uh, she's from Austria, 1885 and she, she mysteriously wakes up in a magical world of Lemuria. And, and there she, she basically wants to you know, go back home. Uh, but to do that, she will, she will have to embark on an adventure and you know, meet some friends and, uh, and yeah, face her, face her darkest fear, basically. Now the game, the art style is beautiful. I mean, it looks like watercolors in motion. So how have you guys taken these beautiful illustrations and then made them into a game? Well, the, we had the technology with the, the engine. It's the engine from Rayman uh, Origin and Legend. So the idea is that we can take 2D asset and, and put it straight in game. And, you know, I wanted to push it more toward the, the feeling of a painting. Uh, so if Rayman is a little bit more cartoony, uh, this one was really about, I want to play on a living painting. So uh, a little bit like, you know, there's the, that one movie with uh, Robert Williams where he, you know, he goes and like, what dreams may come. But it's like, what if we, we take that, you know, a, a beautiful painting or the, even the concept art that people make on, on projects like Assassin's Creed. You see that those beautiful yeah. artwork, they, you know, and, they, and they make those art books with, filled with it, and you're like, wow, it looks great. And then, so what if that would be the, the graphic of the game? So for me, that was really exciting, and I start you know, talking about that with other people at UB, and there, there's a lot of artists that just wanted to join the project, or I was, you know, Super lucky. We had like three guys that were art directors. One guy that quit the project that was uh, going on. He says, "I don't care, Pat, about that project anymore. I want to make. This is what I want to make in my life." It's like, you know. So he's you know, like, "Yeah, but there's 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 stuff I don't want to." Anyway, so so he joined the project. So uh, you could see that there's a uh, you know there was a lot of passion from from people and. Then, they were able to to, uh, to put that you know that passion in in, in the art. So for so it, it create you know it really makes a beautiful result. It's not just beautiful visually, uh, the writing as well. Everything is written like a poem. Am I right in thinking that script is technically longer than Far Cry 3's script? Uh, yes. <laughs> you know, so uh, in terms of page, there's more page. So there's a, there's a you know a big challenge, but at the same time. It was an exciting challenge. I got that, that idea one morning. I was in the shower. I was like, Do all the best thinking in the shower. Yes. Everyone who comes up with their best ideas no, because, in the shower. Yeah, because the, you're relaxed, so the brain releases different kind of hormones. So, so then you go like, oh, you know what? What if, what if we tried that? So, it was the first, you know, for the the, the demo. At first, so we get like, hey Jeff, we didn't start like like, oh, let's write the whole thing completely. You know, that's a big challenge and we'll see if it works. So we had the, the vertical slice of the game. It's like, you know, what if, you know, we, we, we go with literally going with a poem. And he got, you know, Jeffrey got really excited about the idea and we made the test and it worked great. And you know, the style of the game, because then suddenly before it was like difficult to find right, what's the right prose. Uh, you want something a little bit more modern or, or you know, in terms of language, but by putting it like uh, you know in rhymes then then it it, it it matched what we wanted to you know create in terms of, of vibe for the game well it, it reads beautifully when you're playing now the game you've gone for turn-based yeah. uh, RPG which is a very old-school classic kind of mode um, but you've tried to sort of integrate something a little bit different now when people are playing you kind of get a casting time yep. Do you want to talk about your decisions with the battle system yeah so what I wanted to do is to make sure that uh, on every turn I have to make a dis like a, I have to make a decision. So if it's just turn based, technically you're you're always just going to use the most powerful attack. So then then suddenly you're not thinking every turn. You're just like but pressing attack, attack, attack. So there with the, that notion of uh, of time and the casting where there's an interruction uh, period, it means that even this you know the the weaker attack. 
can cancel the enemy's attack. So then suddenly that choice, if it's, you know, because it's quick versus a strong attack is, you know, long, then the weak attack is the best choice. So depending on it, on the situation, then you have to make a tactical choice every turn. So for me, that was uh, exciting. And the fact that we're not, it's we're, it's not precise with how we're showing it. It's a little bit like, okay, I'm going to gamble this attack. So, uh, so, so it's so it makes it uh, you know it makes every turn fun, uh, and then the other thing that that allows is, is the the fact that we can use the second character on screen, the, the little firefly to um, uh, act as a modifier, so we can slow down the enemy. So then you can start using that to juggle uh, the fight, and and so yeah, so so that's you know the, the fact that on you know, the time it. it for me, it gives that little uh, extra to turn base, and so also an homage for Grandia 2. Yeah, I was wondering I really if you'd say it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. Grandia 2. Grandia 2, it does. I remember, speak a lot of I Grandia remember 2. one post on Neil Gaff, and somebody says, Why don't anybody rip off the Grandia 2 combat system? I was like, <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Yeah, you're so, right. So, uh, so, yeah, that's, you know, that's a, you know, for me, that's a good premise for a fight system that would stay great for, 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 for the whole experience. So that, that's, that's what we started with. Amazing. It, it really does make you think when you're playing. Now, you've mentioned the little Firefly. Yeah. Um, what about co-op? Because we can control the Firefly with the right analog stick yeah. or with the touchpad yeah. on Visual Shop 4. But could someone pick up another controller and take over? Yeah, it's super seamless. So basically, you, as soon as you have a second controller uh, that you know uh, is plugged in and then there's some you know interaction with it then automatically the second controller take control of igniculus you can move it around in terms of interaction it's simple you know so i wanted to make sure that the second character can help uh, and not necessarily be like because uh, the idea originally is that you sit down with your child for, in, in my case i was playing nino kuni and i was like <laughs> but i was playing nino kuni after my son was asleep because you know you want to you come from work and then you're spending time with your I was spending time in family and then you wait until my son come, you know goes to sleep and I'm playing the Okuni. It's like why wow, why can I just share that you know experience with with my my, my family and then and, and sit down and play and go up in front of the TV. So then I, the idea was you know Mario Galaxy it's great because you're you don't need to be you know you don't need to be super old or or super experienced or, or good to make it. But so I wanted to keep that. But there's a sense that you can actually help. I wanted something that's more like, you know what, a sit down, it's going to be really, you know, uh, seamless. And, and you know, you're, you're, you're going to be able to participate with me on, on the adventure. A key to any RPG is how you upgrade. Do you want to talk us through like the skills tree? Because it looks kind of familiar to other kind of Ubisoft games we've seen before. Yeah, well, uh, the, the premise of the skill tree, well, this, you know, it looks a little bit like Far Cry 3. <laughs> But the idea is uh, there's three branches per character, and then every character that you meet, so there's like six other partners, every one of them has their own skills. So there's not necessarily any skills that duplicate. And uh, so basically you can specialize your, your guys in, in one direction, and then fight after that, you can bring, you can swap to any character, a little bit like Final Fantasy X. So, uh, so you're not limited to the two characters on screen. You have your whole party uh, available. So uh, there's a lot of flexibility in, in how you can approach the, the game. Amazing. Thank you so much. Thanks. I feel like we've got a lot of RPGs that's sort of in common. I quite like this RPG thing going on. Now, thank you so much. Child of Light looks absolutely stunning between the art style, the gameplay, and the soundtrack. I'm very much in love. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to have even more news from the world of PlayStation coming up.